Hello guys, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another tech related video. This time it is about a tablet that I've owned for a number of years. Um, I think I've had it for about three or four years now, but the tablet launched in about 2012, 2013, and it is the Nextbook 10.1 inch Windows tablet. Um, it came with Windows 8 on it, but I've since put Windows 10 on it. So basically we're gonna test this tablet for gaming, um, even though it is not really aimed at gamers. Um, the specs for this thing, uh, probably the nicest spec that this tablet has is the screen. It is a 10.1 inch IPS display, um, although the resolution is only a 1280 by 800 pixel display. But as far as specs go, this guy is really lacking in the specs department. It runs an Intel Atom processor and the base clock is at 1.3 gigahertz. It is a four core, four thread processor, but still it is only running at 1.3 gigahertz. So for gaming, this thing is pretty much a no-go. Um, it can run very, very light games at best. It only has one gig of RAM. That's the other downside as well. One gig of DDR3 RAM and we're going to try and game on this thing. Apart from that, it's got 32 gigs of storage, which is only got about four gigs free because Windows 10 takes up the rest of the storage. Now I have gamed on this tablet before, but very briefly, um, and it's only been very light games such as Don't Starve and uh, a few other light games like that, um, original Age of Empires. But we are gonna test some more intense games on this tablet today and we'll see how it fares. Okay guys, I've set up the tablet for gaming now. Um, this tablet actually doesn't have a full USB port of any sort. So I have to use a micro USB to full USB female adapter, which I have done for my mouse. And also we have it plugged into mains power. If you can see behind me just here, Unfortunately, this tablet doesn't charge off micro USB. It doesn't charge off, it can't charge off power banks or USB ports or anything like that. There is currently no way of charging it off like other ports other than mains power. But anyway, as you can see on the screen, we have Steam loaded up and we have a few games on there. And um, yeah, let's give it a whirl and see how it performs. Okay, we are launching up uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, pretty much the staple for like cheap machines, uh, like, like low budget machines. It's taking a while to connect to the server though. Oh, there we go. It's unfrozen. It was frozen for quite a while, but it's finally loading. Okay, it's running quite smoothly. Uh, we're getting about 56 frames a second, 55 frames. Not too bad. Bloody hell. <laughs> this gun is not accurate. Ah, oh, there we go. First kill. Second kill. Oh, he dropped the bomb. Oh, we won. I must say I'm usually better than this, uh, but it's just a bit hard to use like the tablet keyboard. So I recommend if you're going to play this like competitively, probably plug in an external keyboard as well. You probably need a USB hub for that because it's only, as I said, it's got only, only got one micro USB port. So, and I've got the mouse plugged into that. Oh, I injured a teammate apparently. Now these are easy bots. Oh, I died. These are easy bots because it is a bit uh, I'm not used to this sort of setup, <laughs> so yeah, um, we're just watching our friends here. So yeah, so far it's running at 56 frames constantly, it seems like 55 to 56 frames. Uh, let's have a look at the graphics settings here. So we're only running at 1280 by 800 because that is the native display resolution of this IPS display. Other than that, we have everything auto. Um, it's going to high and very high mostly, eight times MSAA on anti-aliasing. FXAA anti-aliasing is also enabled, but vertical sync yeah, is disabled obviously because we want to see how many frames we can get out of this thing. Um, yeah, other than that, it's actually running high to very high and eight times MSAA, so not bad and we're getting Nearly 60 frames a second. Um, it would have been ideal to get 60, of course, but it is running pretty smooth. Yeah, we won. All right, so that is CSGO. So as, as I said before, runs quite smooth, 55, 56 frames a second, as you can see by the counter up the top. Uh, let's try another game. Okay, we are now in Rocket League, um, another esports title. Let's just go ahead and launch a bot match, uh, just with me and a couple of bots, and see how it performs on the tablet. Okay, here we go. I must say, it doesn't look too bad. Um, all right, I'm gonna sit back in defense here. Whoa, what the? Oh, I nearly hit it. All right, we're getting a bit of lag. I'm not sure if that's the actual internet connection I have right now, or it is the, uh... oh, I blew up a bit late. Yeah, not sure if it's the internet connection or it's the tablet itself. Maybe it's just not able to play this game. Oh, oh damn it, I'm doing this. Yeah, it just might not be able to handle it. Oh, we got a goal. Rec scored. But yeah, again, just like CSGO, it's running at 56 to 55 frames a second, like somewhere around just under 60. But I've got a constant network error, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm still able to play sort of okay. I'm usually a lot better than I am right now. I haven't done anything to my team. Oh god. Rex, got, Rex is a beast. He's got two goals, two shots. He's, he's one for one. But yeah, it just, the frame rate doesn't budge. It just sticks at 55 and 56. It only differs by one frame <laughs> the whole time we're playing, even when loading and 
Yeah, everything. It's quite strange. Let's try and get our own goal here. It's going to be hard because we've got a constant network error. Here we go. Can I get a goal? Oh, look at that. Last minute goal. Oh, it didn't matter. We were winning anyway. With two seconds left. Four to two. Let's kick off here. We only got two seconds left. And that is going to be game. <laughs> Winner orange. So I'm constantly getting a network error here that says high latency. So I'm not sure, as I said, another device might be uh, utilizing internet right now. I've got 364 ping apparently. <laughs> so I'm not, again, not sure if the tablet itself just can't get the bandwidth through to the game or if there's an actual problem with my internet. Okay guys, I've launched up Dying Light. Let's go ahead and look at the options here. So in video options, we are running it at 1280 by 800. As I said before, this is the native resolution for this IPS display, the 10 inch display. Um, everything else is pretty much high and very high. So view distance is max. All the Nvidia extras are on. Even though this tablet doesn't have an Nvidia GPU, that is a little strange. It's powered by Nvidia Gameworks, but uh, this tablet, it only has the Intel Atom processor and whatever graphics chip is built into the Atom processor. There's actually no dedicated GPU in this tablet. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. It seems to be running quite well, uh, but let's go ahead and continue our game. Okay, so we are now in the game of Dying Light. Uh, it is running quite smooth, although I'll get a few hiccups here and there. So I'll go, I'll do a bit of free running and every now and then I'll get a, um, bit of a hiccup so i'm not sure what's going on there sprinting through town jump over the zombie there we go oh a lot of zombies here might have to run away <laughs> off of your head come on oh didn't decapitate but remove its head but killed it anyway oh bye bye hand jesus christ oh there goes a head oh there goes another head oh there goes something uh a hand oh oh that one's vomiting up Oh, Jesus. So yeah, Dying Light right now is running at a constant, again, 55 to 56 frames a second. And you guys might be questioning whether this is legit or not. We'll get to that at the end of the video. Um, oh, I have to use medkit. I was about to die. Oh, what am, oh, I'm getting hit by, whoops. Oh, these guys, it's a gas canister zombie. Do I have a gun? I do. There we go, let's blow up that zombie, eh? Bye-bye. Whoa. Oh, let's get on top of here. There we go. Oh, get out of here. Oh, he left his foot behind, look at that. Okay, so no matter what I do in the game, it is running at a constant 55 to 56 frames a second, as I mentioned before. So this is the third and last game I will be testing. This is Dying Light. Um, now I am going to basically come clean with you guys and mention why that this is able to work the way it does. So you guys must be curious why I was able to get a constant 55 to 56 frames a second on pretty much any game that I tried. Even though we only tried three games, two of them were esports titles. They were all at very high and high settings. And also a very intensive title such as Dying Light was getting a constant 55 to 56 frames a second on a, a tablet of this caliber, and that shouldn't be the case. And now to finish off this video, guys, I have to tell you that I've basically been lying to you the whole video. Um, I was actually using my main desktop to stream the game live in real time to the tablet. But yeah, basically this video is just showing you what you can do with Steam um, in-home streaming. Um, so that is basically the service where Steam is able to stream a game on one PC and display it on another monitor or PC, um, such as this tablet. And basically it gives life to your old devices. So in conclusion, if you have an old device that runs Windows, whether it's Windows Vista 7, 8 or 10, um, you can still use it to stream Steam games to it, uh, basically no matter what specs it has. Um, the reason we were only capping out at 55 or 56 frames a second was because that is all this CPU in this tablet could really handle. It couldn't handle 60 frames a second and more because it just the CPU is doing too much already. There's basically the Intel Atom CPU built into this thing was simply using its whole 100% capacity to stream the game from my other PC. But if you have a more powerful Windows device than this, um, basically you'll be able to get 60 frames and above. However, one downside to in-home streaming through Steam is the slight delay that it adds. Of course, you're streaming the game live from your other computer to another computer. So there's obviously some time lost there with, tra with transcoding the game into H.264. There's a delay not only in the display, but also the controls, because of course you're using different controls on the other PC sending the control inputs to your main PC where the game's running. So there's a lot of added delay as well. So I recommend not playing esports titles such as Rocket League or CSGO, unless you're just playing with bots. But games such as Dying Light, which you can play completely single player. There's no always online connection with Dying Light unless you opt into it. Um, you can play it completely offline. Pretty much any Steam game works with in-home streaming, which is great. So you have a whole library of games that can now stream to another room in your house 
to another system or device. So even though I lied to you guys from the beginning of this video, I hope that you did enjoy anyway. If you did, leave a like down below, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you guys around the channel. All right, have a good one.